Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, February 13th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, let's start out with some seasonal related spam trends. And now, first of all, the Nakurs botnet. It has been one of the predominant sources of spam in the last few months. Brad has written a couple times about it in prior diaries. The latest spam emerging from this botnet is romance spam for Valentine's Day. Apparently, some women that claim that they are interested in you will send you spam and you're then tempted to reply to them. The second one is delivering the more classic ransomware now it does mask itself as one of the very common IRS notices, which of course are going around and distributing various kinds of matter during tax season, which we just started here. This second botnet apparently isn't really all that discriminating in who it sends its emails to. For example, some users in England reported receiving these emails that claim to be from the IRS, which of course is mostly a US agency. And secondly, apparently some of these emails are actually written in German, but still are going to UK recipients. Spam is, of course, all about big numbers. X-Force is reporting about the Nakur botnet that they are detecting tens of millions of spam messages from this botnet every single day. And GitHub is coming under some fire for how it is dealing with resurrecting deleted user accounts. If you are deleting your account from GitHub, someone else can essentially register a new account using your username more or less immediately. This has been brought to the attention recently with a pretty popular Go library. The developer of this library deleted his GitHub account soon after another developer did resurrect the user ID by just registering it as a new account. And in this case, this new developer was able to resurrect these old and deleted libraries. Now, in this case, it may have helped out a lot of people that are coding in Go in order to not lose their dependencies. However, this could also be easily abused by malicious actors to take over popular libraries and then essentially exploiting software that includes them. This issue has come up in the past, for example, with webmail systems, but in particular with libraries and popular code repositories like GitHub, this is of course especially problematic. If you are a developer on GitHub and if for some reason you are no longer happy with GitHub, maybe because they charge you too much or any issues like that, you should not delete your account for now. However, you can set your repositories as archived and that way the name at least will be protected, but the code will no longer be available if this is what you're trying to accomplish. And then we got an interesting vulnerability patched for Plasma, the KDE desktop environment for Linux. In this particular case, all it took to run code on a system running Plasma was to inject a USB stick and make sure that the volume label of the USB stick includes backticks or dollar and then parentheses, which then include the code you would like to execute. So a very straightforward kind of uh, escaping problem here where volume labels weren't validated correctly or not escaped properly. And if you have to run WordPress on a website, then one of the things you probably want to make sure is that WordPress is regularly updated. And now quite a while ago, WordPress implemented an automatic self update function. This came originally in WordPress 3.7. Sadly, in its next to latest version, version 4.9.3, WordPress broke this auto update function. So WordPress will no longer self update. 
If you installed WordPress 493, either using the self-update feature or manually, well, uh, now you have to actually update manually via the admin interface. WordPress 494, which was released a couple days ago, is now fixing this problem and re-enabling self-update. And you may have heard stories about disruptions of computer systems at the ongoing Winter Olympics. Well, when I originally heard these stories, I first thought about either a denial of service attack or maybe the sites were just very busy and more busy than anticipated. But it turns out it was actually a bit more sinister. Malware was deployed on affected systems and that malware had pretty much two features. One was to spread to other systems that included stealing credentials from the system the malware was installed on and then secondly after spreading the malware would just delete files on the system. The malware does delete shadow copies. It also does delete the backup tool WB admin that could be used to actually recover some files and then changes the boot policy to actually make it impossible to boot into a recovery mode, make it more difficult to recover affected systems. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.